uh, we need some help with the setup crew, uh, moving tables and chairs in the Spirit Center. Um, I think we have five events this month that have to have different setups, uh, so we'll need some people that can come and move some tables and chairs. Um, if you would like to do that, you can see me or Pastor Bill after the service, and we'll get you on the email list. Um, it's just a, a kind of preset thing. It, it's pretty easy, uh, and the more people we have, the faster it goes. Uh, May 22nd, May 22nd, we have a potluck lunch, potluck lunch, immediately following the 11 o'clock service in the Spirit Center. So if you come to the 930 service, you have time to run home, heat up your potluck, and then bring it uh, at 12 o'clock in the Spirit Center. Uh, we hope to see everyone there. That's a great opportunity for everybody to get to mingle with the different services, so it'll be good. Um, then I want to remind everybody in the back of the seats in front of you, there you will see some name tags. Um, if you can fill one of those out and stick it on, we would love to uh, just make everybody a little bit easier. I am the world's worst with names. I just admit that up front. Uh, I've been here six years, and there's still people that I'm like, oh, I can't remember. So uh, it'll really help me out if that, if that helps. Um, and then the last thing I want to remind everybody of is this Wednesday. This Wednesday is our last Wednesday night uh, gathering uh, for the summer. So we will start back when school starts back, but this Wednesday, the 11th, is our last Wednesday night meal, kids and adults ministry and youth. Uh, so make sure you're there. It'll be a lot of fun. That's it? That's it. Um, let's, let's pray. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to be here this morning, so grateful that we get to gather together in your name, uh, lift our voices and praise and worship you. Lord, you are so good. You pour out your blessings all around us. Uh, Lord, just, we pray, come Holy Spirit, fill this space, fill our hearts, fill our minds, fill our words, as we praise you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, everyone. We have a wonderful morning of worship planned this morning. But how great is it that we can all come together and worship God together as one? Because where two or more are gathered, He is there. So let's stand up and let's sing together.
for the next two songs.
wow, that's going to be tough to follow, isn't it? Every time I get up here, the music's been better than I am. I was, just call me let down. Yeah, that's, that's the way to go. I'm going to move that so I don't drop it in the middle. Wow, thank you everybody for being here. Thank you kids for singing. What a great day. Uh, the sermon title, uh, I know one of the screens is working. I don't know if the other one's up. If you guys are over on this side, you all may want to come over and knock them out of their seats so you can see better. Uh, my children know my voice. Uh, I, th- I think that's, that's a pretty important statement. I, I can see you pretty good today. Um, was mom's voice or dad's voice the scariest when you were a kid? Dad? Dad? <clears throat> Anybody think mom's was? No? Yeah, Edith thinks mom's was. Who said no? There, there's one, Debbie. Yeah, Sloan says mom's voice is just not much at all, right? It's not. She's a softy. Dad's a scary. Um, wow. You know, mom's voice could be. Um, rarely at us, but, but if you got in mom's way, my, oh my. Uh, 1964, I was five. Um, in, in that range. It could have been 65. I'm playing t-ball. Dad's had a heart attack. Um, Mom is going to coach the team. She shows up in the ball hat. Mom's 4'6". Not much, not much to mom. She's a little lady. She was rounder than she was tall, but she was 4'6", and she showed up with a ball hat, and she's in the dugout getting the lineup ready, and honestly knows absolutely nothing about baseball. But fortunately, it's T-ball, and we're five, and knowledge of baseball really doesn't matter, does it? So anyway, the other coaches come up, because this is 1964. Women aren't allowed in the dugout, is what they say. Mm Mm-hmm. The group of them come. (laughs) My brother comes up. Um, John, he's he's two years younger than I am, so he he's in the three and a half range, and we're standing at the gate, and and he had a he had an interesting little brogue at that age, and he said, "I think she's going to get them." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Oh yeah, she was going to get them. You 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 just you just don't mess. You just don't mess, do you?" It's a different day. I say Happy Mother's Day to all of you. And there's a lovely little slide with flowers. This is for each of you. Pick a flower off the TV and take it home with you. Um, <laughs> but but it's, it's a different day and time. Because in this day, there are moms that are dads and dads that are moms. And there are grandmas and grandpas that are moms and dads. So, so the old fluffy bunny Mother's Day sermon doesn't always fit so well anymore. Um, I can't, I can't tell how many family settings I've been in where, where grandma is an essential player. And, and I have to say, even back in the 60s and 70s, that was the case in my house because mom was not always well and, and well, dad was dad. And um, some of you understand what that can mean. And grandma was a big part. And to this day, I miss grandma. I talk to her. I hear her voice. And listen, you think mom or dad's voice is scary? You should hear grandma's voice. You should hear the terror that is in, embedded in little children, and Grandma doesn't even raise a voice. It's a look. But grandmas are a big part of family life today. And, and I don't know if you, how many of you know, most of you might. Uh, I was a single parent for a while, and, and I had a, a 14-month-old. And um, my son was about eight. Um, so, so I understand some of it. I, I know what it's like to go buy clothes and... I went to Toys R Us one time, and I'm standing there doing some Christmas shopping. I look over, and there's a dad standing in the middle of the girls' section with tears. And, and he, he said, um, I don't remember exactly what happened, but he was alone with kids. And he said, I don't know what to do. I, I, I've been through this the year before. So I said, man, we got to get you some Barbies. And we headed down the Barbie aisle. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a different time, I tell you guys. There are moms that are coaching t-ball, they're dead. I was room mother. <laughs> Who's laughing? 
Yeah, it's okay. It's, it's all right. We, we're here to let us entertain you. That's why we're here. Um, principal took me by the hand. Uh, she, we're walking in. I'm headed to Philip's class for the first day. And she says, well, you and I need to have a talk. And, you know, anytime the principal says, oh, dear, we need to have a talk, it's scary. So we walk to the room, and she introduces me to the teacher. And she said, it's her first day. Everyone else has everything in play. You will tell her you'll be her room mother. There you go. I, I think I'm saying this to you to tell you th that, like it or not, there are places in the 50s we'll never go back to. And there are moms raising kids and dads raising kids and grandmas raising kids. And, and for so many of us, it's a team sport. Uh, what comes to mind for me today is my friends Jim and Karen. Uh, Karen, in particular, was one of the first people I met when I moved from Missouri to Alabama. She happened to be the substitute teacher the day I'm, I'm there. Uh, and it, it was a miserable day. I, for one, I'm on crutches, but I kept saying, yeah, and people kept sending me to the office. Um, and any of you from the Midwest or the North, you know, that's what we say. And um, so I kept getting in trouble. So Karen explained it to me. As it turned out, I found out we were going to be neighbors. Karen and her husband, Jim, lived in my neighborhood. And there'd be times when mom would be in the hospital, the home would be troubled, and, and I'd go to their house. And John and I would stay down there, and she was one of those magnificent cooks. She could peel the foil back on a Swanson's better than most anybody in the world could. Um, anybody remember when TV dinners had foil on them? Yeah. And so every Mother's Day, it happened right before the last service. In my head, I go back and I meet Karen again in my mind. Uh, Karen never had children. But she knows, because we talk, that every Mother's Day, I take pause because I remember her. It's just a different day. Um, I served a church once that, that they came up with the phrase fluffy bunnies and said on Mother's Day and Father's Day, we don't want to hear truth, we just want to hear fluffy bunny stories. Um, I can't do that, guys, because life is hard sometimes, and it's just different, and you're out there doing the best you can, and, and so we want to bless that. So I go a different direction on Mother's Day. It's definitely a, a mom sermon, but it's more, of a, it's more of a who we are in Christ and in God's sermon. I take you back to Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning created God, and that first word for God, Elohim, that was God's name there. But the second word for God is spirit, is ruach. The idea of the ruach was the force that blasted through sin. That when the ruach cleansed people of sin, it was a, an explosive, a dynamite sort of thing. <clears throat> it's gone. But the other thing interesting in Genesis 1, the second reference to God, is the Spirit of God hovering. Some, ancient, some of your King James versions go brooding hovering, sweeping across the waters. The, the Hebrew concept was mothering, that the Spirit of God is hovering and mothering across creation. It, it's my mom going after those coaches. It's Karen peeling the foil back. It's grandma getting out of her car with, with big bags full of goodies and toys for kids that didn't have a lot. It, it's the idea that, that we let go. You, you do know God's not a man, right? God is spirit. It's biblical. Some people really, that bothers them when I say that. But the second reference to God is, is the, the ever-present mothering spirit hovering across the waters, viewing across creation. One of the most fantastic illustrations has been found in the wildfires. And every now and then a firefighter will find a mother bird who had spread her wings around the babies. And the mother is dead, but the babies are alive. And she had brooded, she had hovered, she had gathered. It's very Jesus-like, too, when he gathers the sheep into the fold. The Spirit of God, the Ruach, the creating force, hovers, broods, mothers across creation. I find that helpful to me because there, there are things in our lives that cross traditional roles in parenting is one of them. When I first realized that, that I was going to have Hannah for a period there by myself, I, I went to Parisian. Anybody remember Parisian? 
yeah. And I went to the lady I knew at the cashier's thing, and I said, here's my situation. And she led me to this collection of girl clothes. It, there was watermelons, there was grapes, there were strawberries, and there were apples and cherries, which meant I didn't even have to think, does it match? You just got a fruit on Monday, a fruit on Tuesday, a fruit on Wednesday, a fruit on Thursday, a fruit on Friday, and Saturday you wore sweatpants and a t-shirt. When I met Steph, by the third meeting, Stephanie said to me, does she have any other clothes than sweatpants? <laughs> the Spirit of God hovered across creation mothered things into existence. The powerful spirit of God that could create, that could manifest, that could do and be, woos us in to a safe place. Walk on to Genesis with me, where it talks about God created woman. And, and we know that God took the rib, and there's terrible jokes, there's terrible jokes. Why didn't God barbecue the rib instead? But, but in the Hebrew philosophy, in Hebrew philosophy, there's something very powerful here. Their idea, their theology said that, that if woman were to be Lord over men, the bone would have been taken from about the shoulder, the heart space upwards, okay? If she were to be subservient to men, it would have been from the heart space downwards, maybe a toe or something. But in Hebrew theology, the idea was that by coming from the rib, they were to stand side by side. And, and who, who wouldn't love to slap the authors of King James who came up with that terrible phrase, help meet? Not help mate, help meet. Isn't that M-E-E-T, I think it is. The idea of helping in that phrase was co-rulers. Who doesn't like that better? I see women smiling, men frowning co-rulers in the space to stand side by side and the idea was totally dependent and totally interdependent and I tell you it goes just beyond the family relationship you take any of the ladies or the men off the platform and my sermon is weakened I'm average on a good day but it is Kate, it is Jenny, it is Sherry Lynn, it is whoever sings with them that pulls things up together. Life and faith is a team sport. And ladies, you were meant to stand side by side. I have worked with some of the finest female clergy that, that I could ever work with. Offhand, just sitting here, I can think of four females that could replace me tomorrow and do better than I do for you but about 80% of our churches would not have them. And it makes me sad. For I am the father of two daughters. I know you've heard the Hannah kick the boy story. Um, anyone not heard Hannah kick the boy story? There's one. Okay, you get it again. <laughs> it's just a favorite. Hannah, Hannah was 5'2". She weighed 90 pounds. Boy lays down in front of the girl's locker. She kicks him in the stomach, knocks the wind out of him because he won't move. Baseball coach, anybody remember Lloyd Skoda? Lloyd grabs her. There's one. Oh, yeah. Lloyd grabs her and pulls her back and said, why'd you kick my ball player in the stomach? And she said, because I missed, coach. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm a dad of strong daughters, can you tell? Yeah, it's Mother's Day. But there are dads involved because they have to be. There are moms going alone because they have to. There are grandmas knee deep in the game because they have to. And there are neighbors who've come alongside because they could and they chose to. It's just so much bigger than we imagine. And God has created all of us to be in the team together. I love seeing the children up today. Do you like their expressions? Some singing out, some not. There's arms folded, there's eyes up. Oh, I remember so much. When, when Stephanie and I did our church plant together, it was such a mixture of life. There, there were black kids and there were white kids and there were Mexican kids and there were biracial kids. Um, there were Mexican and Indian, black and white and all, the variety. 
But so many of my immigrant members, they, they weren't taught by, you know, good moms who make their kids sit up straight or switch them. Did you just hear that was acquainted with good mom? Mm-hmm. And, and so when I would call children's moment, I would just say children's moment, and they would come like a herd, like a swarm of bees, and they would just jump on me. And, you know, fortunately, I'm in my 40s then, th late 30s, early 40s then, so it wasn't terrible. But at 61, to have 20 kids jump on me? That's what I picture in our Gospels. Jesus sits down, and, and all of the children just herd. They just come like a swarm of bees to him. There's something innate in their DNA and his that conjoin, that come together and say, this is a safe place for me. And of course, the disciples, being good church folk, try to stop it. I always get a kick out of churches who always want more kids but want them to sit up straight, be quiet, and sit in church. You know, kids are supposed to put marks on our walls. It's what they do. But I see the children running to Jesus and the disciples trying to stop them like, like, like somebody kicked a fire ant hill. And Jesus says to them, stop it. Stop it now. Let them come here. Let them be. And, and when Jesus says, let them be with me, can you, do you get that in a, in a much deeper sense? Let them sit in the lap of God. Let them come to the eternal parent. Let them draw near and touch and feel safe. And then he says to the disciples and the people around, unless you come like a child, you'll never see the kingdom. I'm not so sure that means eternal life. I think that means you won't see out there if you don't come with an innocent naivete and just believe that you're safe in the arms of God. Another very powerful voice. It's a conversation, really. And, and, and um, I'm heading forward. I don't know what slide we're going to be on. Let me take a peek. Let's see where we are in the sermon. Let's go to the next one and see what happens, shall we? My sheep hear my voice. The Pharisees have just gathered, and they said, Jesus, tell us the truth. Who are you? Jesus said, you wouldn't believe me anyway, because my sheep know my voice long time ago when my kids were small I would do this little noise I don't know if you'll hear it anybody hear that I would come to the ballpark and Hannah's playing second base and I'll do that noise when I approach the crowd and she will stop and wave and then one night at a basketball game my stepdaughter who, who at that point was 16 and I walked into the stadium and she's out on the court cheering and I made that noise and she stops and waves We know the voices that are safe. And it's a hard day to hear a safe voice. The political climate, the economic climate, the worldwide climate, to hear a safe voice. And everybody, everybody is, is espousing the voice of God and quoting the scripture. I think it's just a need to hear the safe voice. I want to say you too, and, I, and we're going to take a peek and see what comes up next on the screen. Let's see what's there, because my notes are all how to whack. Here's another thing, moms and ladies and grandmas, and ladies who aren't married or never been and never want to be again, whatever your category is. Jesus was surrounded by strong women. And whenever I hear somebody say, women can't, I go back and I read my gospel and I see what women did. Phoebe, Lydia, Lois, Eunice, Deborah in the Old Testament, the Marys and the crowd that were around Jesus. Jesus was surrounded by strong women. Phoebe was called a deaconess. And some churches would say, well, she's not a deacon because she was a deaconess. Well, that would, that would be like trying to call Kate Mr. Kate, because she's up here and she's a woman, but we can't call her a woman. The Greek language is one of suffixes and prefixes. It has the root, and then it has the little add-on, much like Spanish, that, that highlights number, gender, case, and things like this. 
Deaconess simply had a word on it, so we would call her Miss Phoebe instead of Mr. Phoebe. But she was a deacon. You hear that? We are a force that penetrates the world with the grace of God. Go to the next one. Let's see what I did next. I have no idea. Just skip that one. Skip that one. Here we go. We'll end there. Um, maybe be one more. You know, if I were smarter, it'd be a whole different day, wouldn't it? But the idea for us today is this. That men, you will raise kids, and women, you will raise kids, and grandmas, you will raise kids, and some of you who will never have a kid will raise kids. I remember teachers who never had a child, and to this day, when I sit back, I see Miss Butler. I hear her voice. I know her voice. When Jesus says, my sheep know my voice, he says several things. My sheep know where they are loved. My sheep know where they are safe. My sheep know where I will protect them, forgive them, woo them in, pasture them in safety. My sheep know my voice. My children know my voice. And in the same way moms and dads, your kids know their voice, the Spirit of God hovers across creation and moves back and forth Call it brooding, call it hovering, call it sweeping, call it mothering, call it parenting, call it whatever you wish. But know there is no space, there is no place, there is no grace that you can escape. The loving, tender, grace, presence of God. And so, on Mother's Day, on Women's Day, on this day, and this is important, ladies. You matter in the kingdom of God. I have a good preacher friend. Actually, it's a couple. They were appointed to a church. Everybody, because I knew the church, and they would call me and tell me how much they loved her and how much better she was than her husband and how, how strong and of a leader she was. And we love having her. We take him, because he's funny, but we love her. And then he got moved, and she became senior pastor and as she puts it, they discovered I was a woman and they wanted her gone. Boys, we got to stand in the gap against that stuff. It's hooey. Can you hear that? Hooey? There's another word we could use. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Faith is a team sport. And I remember Miss Butler and Karen and Grandma and Hannah who kicked the boy. You go, girl. Another Hannah story. It's about time. She comes down the hall. She had her black belt, Corey, Taekwondo. Um, she comes in the hall. A, a, a boy comes through, opens the door and lets it shut and it hits an elementary school girl and knocks her books everywhere. Hannah does something with his neck and something with a finger and she puts him in the wall and she says, we don't treat ladies like that. He ended up on the ground somehow. The coach called me to tell me about it in the same line. I said, do I have to come up there? He said, nope, she got him before I did. <laughs> Spirit of God is strong. The Spirit of God is strong in all creation. From the flowers and the trees to men and to women. If you hear nothing else today, hear this. The Spirit of God hovers, broods, sweeps, mothers across creation, wooing us into the grace of God always. Women were created to be co-rulers of this planet. Together, we are world changers by the humble grace of God. You go be you and hear the voice of God. And in this world, politically, figure out what we need to stand up for. 
one another is a good start. My sheep will hear my voice and they will follow. Amen. I'd like to ask that you stand and let's close together. As you go through your week, my prayer is that you see him in all that you do, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I hope that you see him throughout your week. Let's sing this together. Open the eyes of my heart. sit for just a moment, please. I'm going to preach again. <clears throat> um, I didn't get finished, but we have time. Um, actually, I'd like to invite David and Linda Williford to come up with me, please. They've um, asked to, to put their membership here with Foley United Methodist. It's always exciting, yeah. Um, every time this happens, we are new. It, it, it is the born again thing. It's new life. It's, it's a new heartbeat that exists among us. Thank you, Jenny. And um, it's just a treat, isn't it, to have new folk? Uh, there are two official questions we'd, we'd like to ask. They've already done the FBI check and the financial <laughs> disclosure. Um, do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? And we would be loyal to our God's church. Then, wow, look at this, guys. They have joined. <laughs> yeah. They'll get the secret handshake and the decoder ring in just a minute. Greet them to the degree that you are comfortable today. And, um, oh God, there's a world out there that needs parenting. There's a world out there that needs to be wooed, to be graced, to 
be brought in to the safe place. May we honor you by doing just that. Amen.